Didn't we just have a movie just like this in 2024? Am I crazy? I mean, I know I'm crazy, but am I crazy? What's up, Netflix fans? This is my review of A Family Affair, the brand new romantic comedy on Netflix. Is it funny? Is it romantic? Also, apologies if you hear Miss Rachel in the background. My daughter's home, so she's doing that. I'm doing this. It's A Family Affair. Hey. Uh, he said it. He said it. This is madness. Right? Yeah. This is your mom. <laughs> and your boss, who you hate. It's weird. An unexpected romance triggers comic consequences for a young woman, her mother, and her boss grappling with the complications of love, sex, and identity. It's a Netflix movie, so obviously Joey King's gonna be in there, but you also have Zac Efron, Nicole Kidman, and Kathy Bates. So genuinely, it's one of the most stacked rom-com movie casts I have seen in a long time. And they're all great. Of course, they're going to be great. I'm not saying the characters are written well. I'm not saying the movie's written well. But the performances, as you expect, individually are really good. And actually, you know what? I'll say Joey King's the standout. I liked her story the most. I liked her struggle the most. I liked her frustrations the most because her boss, who's kind of a little bit of a D-bag. Can I say that on YouTube? D-bag? Watch your profanity. And her mom, who's been single for a while now, Kathy Bates playing the mother of her former husband, is just kind of looking for something. A little bit of spark. She doesn't know she's looking for something, but when she sees this hot sculpted man in Zac Efron, she says, I'm looking for that piece of Ace. Calm down. Let's stick with the good. If you like this genre and you're okay with putting this on as a background watch, you just want to see a couple of romantic scenes and uh, one or two subplots that you may respond to, some heartwarming moments with Kathy Bates' character, and admittedly, this movie does get better as it goes. And by the time we get to the end, part of me is like, oh, okay. But then the other part of me is like, but wait. The most important thing with a rom-com is that the main two people have to have chemistry, and unfortunately, that's where this movie falls apart. Again, individually good performances, but when Efron and Kidman are on screen together, they're good, but I didn't buy that relationship. I didn't buy the beginning of the relationship. I didn't buy the fact that they have anything in common, and you don't have to, I guess, for a movie like this, but you at least have to have some conversations and share moments with each other that allow us to believe that this relationship is actually happening. Unfortunately, it just feels superficial and dishonest, right? It spawns from them getting physical and intimate, not emotionally, but physically for the first time, and then they come back and they do it. They actually do it. They do the dirt. You what? And yeah, the physical part of the relationship's there because that's what the audience craves with a movie like this. But where's the intimacy? Where's the emotional connection? You have Efron's character who really just kind of needs that figure in his life to guide him and lead him in the right direction. Is that the other person in a relationship? Or is that like a motherly figure? And then Kidman, who hasn't been physically intimate in so long, she's just kind of looking for the physical part. And after going out and spending some time together, she realizes that he actually is a sweet guy, but what is there beyond that? And when we learn some things about his character later on in the movie, not to spoil this very familiar romantic comedy, but uh, when we do that, that's the point where I said, all right, Nicole Kidman, let's move on. Let's go on and... No. No. And again, individually, they're good, compelling, and the storyline with Joey King's daughter, uh, actually, that mother-daughter relationship was much more impressive for me than the actual romance that's going on in this movie. And that was the good part of the movie because of what she's struggling with, and she is, and she's trying to be a writer in Hollywood because Efron's character is this big star, and they keep making jokes throughout the film like, yeah, this movie that we're working on is really poorly written, so we have to work on the script. And I'm thinking, was that the writers trying to tell themselves that they should work on this script, but they didn't? Is that, I don't know what's going, what's going on? Are you going to laugh at the moments where Joey King walks in and her mother and her boss are getting it on? Yeah, I mean, those types of moments, they write themselves, they're really funny, and they're sweet. And again, this isn't a romantic comedy that's atrocious on every level, and you can't put on in the background while you're doing laundry or something like that. It's on Netflix, conveniently, so you can absolutely do that. But if you want to buy the relationship, if you want to get invested in their relationship, and you want to see kind of a dollar store version of that in Hathaway movie from earlier this year... This is that, 
It just didn't have really any of the charm romantically of that film. And stylistically, it doesn't necessarily bring anything to the table. Just one or two funny storylines and plot threads. And again, some really sweet moments with Kathy Bates towards the end. She makes everything better. I got to the final moment, and even though I didn't buy the chemistry, it is sweet in itself, but it wasn't enough to convince me that this entire thing should have happened in the first place because of the clear lack of chemistry and just the way their relationship is written. They didn't give them enough to do together. Just one little stroll through an area that was, you learn later on, is just a thing that he does. And so I'm like, ah, I don't. And, and he's, he's not a good person. And obviously that's going to change as this movie goes, but even at the beginning, I'm like, how am I supposed to root for this guy? I mean, he was in the Iron Claw and right there, so maybe I just imagine it's actually Zac Efron. That's about it. What more is there to say here? Leave your thoughts down below. Did this romantic comedy work for you? Is it a background watch, or were you genuinely invested in the characters? Dropping that like would be awesome to support this video, and check out our podcast, Movie Mode, where I'll talk about this this weekend. A family affair has a lot going for it at times, from its charming moments to some quirky gags. The missing and ingredient, however, is the most important element for a romantic comedy, and that is the chemistry between the main couple. Not only is their relationship poorly written, but there is absolutely no reason to root for them. Joey King's plot thread is the MVP, but the rest fails to come together, and this movie failed to work for me, even though it wasn't actually the worst time. I've had all year. So I guess it could have been significantly worse. Thank goodness uh, the charming moments overcame uh, the lack of uh, quality of the script. So thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. Plenty more reviews. Quiet Place dropped yesterday. Horizon tomorrow.